Here are five cat pat tips that you can use for when you are doing your phase one research. These are tips that are going to help you find the right information so that you can get the right questions for your 10 questions aspect of your phase one pat report. Let's start with cat pat tip number one, which is use good keywords. When you are searching for information by using good keywords, you are more likely to find information that is going to be more valuable and useful to you. So it's very easy to just search for whatever the pet topic is, but also try to include other aspects. For example, including the sector that you have chosen to focus on, for example, in medicine fields. In every PAT document, there will be certain sectors that they highlight that you must focus on. So it's not just the PAT topic, but it's the PAT topic in that particular sector. So when you are searching for them, make sure that you include the sector or a word that relates to your sector in your keywords. Another keyword that you can use is to also indicate your target audience. For example, if you are searching for the ethical use of artificial intelligence, but only in South African schools. Now we can get more specific data that can be more useful for your pet. In our previous videos, we talked about first finding the information and then working out what your questions are going to be. And those questions have to relate to four different levels. Now, when you are searching for information based on level one and two, it's quite easy because those are just factual information or why things happen. But level three and four are the questions that are going to be difficult to find. By using good keywords, we are more likely to find information that relates to level three and four. For example, indicating that we want to find the ethical use of artificial intelligence, but focusing on a particular target keyword like predictions. This relates to a level three type question. So we are more likely to find information that can be answered by a level three question. Other keywords that can be used, for example, are recommendations or to evaluate or to search for best practices. These are going to help you get your level three and four information. Other words that you can also include are statistics. This will be particularly useful for your phase two spreadsheet, as well as words like potential benefits or concerns. Using these keywords in conjunction with your pet topic will help you get better information. Another way to use good keywords is to focus on the category. For example, looking at the consequences. In your PAT guide, you were given some examples of categories that you must group your questions by. You won't be using all of them and you can create your own ones. But if you've got an idea of what categories you want to focus on, then you can use those as part of your keywords, trying to find solutions or problems or the background. This can also help refine your information that you are looking for. And then cat pat tip number two is to use good sites. Now your search engine is probably going to be your most common site you use, but you can get more refined information. For example, if you use Google News, you can find it on the right hand side when you click on that menu option and you can see Google News is one of the options available to you. And that way you can find information that is current or up to date that has only been released a couple of days ago. This can help you find news articles, which can be your other source. Another good site that you can use is Google Scholar. This is a site which helps you search for academic research. So you can find papers from academic institutions, theses, research articles. You can search by a particular time. You can even go look at the citations from this research. They are quite complicated and require a bit of reading, but you may find a useful resource in Google Scholar, which is more likely to be considered a credible source. Another way to use good sites is to search for your particular pet topic on a targeted site that you trust. For example, searching for information on the TED.com site. To do that, you just type in the word site, colon, and what site you want to use, and then you'll get information that's just on that website. So identify websites that are credible, that are useful. Sites, for example, like TED, Idea City, and JSTOR are good examples of sites which could contain valuable and credible information. But also remember when you are trying to find information that you must be careful of wikis. I'm a big fan of Wikipedia, but a lot of places do not recognize the information on Wikipedia or wikis. So if you do find information on a wiki, then maybe go look at the references. And that way you can find the article that is referenced and maybe use that. That way you're not using the wiki, but you're just using the wiki to find the information. And just a general tip is to try and look for recently published sites or information. The more recently it's been published is the more likely it's going to be updated and relevant. And then another site that I particularly enjoy is to use explorer.globe.engineer. I have a video on it explaining how to use it. I'll put a link to that video in the video description. But this is a great way to find information and this is how you can use it. So this AI is used to find information on a particular topic. So if we want to search for ethical use of artificial intelligence and we can search on it. 
it will go and find articles for us that we can review. And what's nice is you can get an overview of it by just looking at the thumbnail. If you find something that's interesting, you can click on it and it tries to give you a nice summary about what that information is. So if that further intrigues you, you can go and open that link and go read about this particular information and see if it's useful. So that is explorer.globe.engineer, a really great site to find some resources using artificial intelligence. Then CatPat tip number three, and that is you need to record your sources. You need to record information about where you got that information from. For example, if you get a website, we need to get the details of the publisher or the organization, the website name, when it was created, when you access it, and the URL. So what I've done is I've created a document that you can use to record all that information as you are doing your research. And then you can always come back later to enter this information for your bibliography and your citations. You can download this document from tinyurl.com slash sources and you can get your own version. Just remember that you can't use this one online. You have to download your own one and you simply do that by going by to file, download, and then make sure that you save it as an Excel document into your pad folder and that way you can have your own one to edit and update. And then catpad tip number four, you also need to save your sources. In other words, you need a digital copy of them. If you look in the rubric, it does mention, have you got evidence of your sources? This is particularly in the phase three, but we must start doing that now. So if you find a really great site, all you have to do is go to print it. And then when the print dialog pops up, make sure that you save it as a PDF. When you click on that save button, it'll ask you where do you want to save it. Make sure that you save it to the sources folder in your phase one folder that's in your CatPat folder. This is also very useful in case you need to go through your sources and you don't have internet access. But what happens if your source is not a website, but it's a physical book or magazine? Well, if that's the case, then you can scan the relevant pages from that source and put those into your sources folder. You can scan it with a scanner or you can use your phone and you can go into your Google Drive. And if you want to add a document, it gives you an option to scan using your phone's camera. That creates a PDF which you can then download or email to yourself to put into your sources folder. The same option exists on OneDrive. You can also go and add a new document and there's a scan option there as well. And if you don't want to do that, you can also download apps. For example, Adobe Scan is very good as well as Genius Scan. These apps allow you to use your phone to scan in information and store them as PDFs. If one of your sources is a video or audio source, then I suggest that you save the transcript. There are lots of websites online that can do that for you for free. One of them, for example, is YouTube to transcript. You just give it the URL of the video that's online and it will convert it into text for you, which you can then save to a document and put into your sources folder. Once you've got all your sources in a PDF format, you can actually open them up, for example, in Microsoft Edge, and you'll see that they've got these tools at the top where you can highlight information. Just pick the highlighter, pick a particular color and highlight the information in the source that relates to your questions. You can use different colors for different questions if that source is answering multiple questions. But this will also make it easier for you to find the information later when you're doing your summary. Just remember, you must save it so that you can save the highlights that you've done to this page. And then finally, our cat pat tip number five is don't forget about images. There may be images you want in your phase one document just to make it look a bit more professional. There may be information that you find from images. But if you look at the rubric, particularly for the phase three, they talk about all graphics and other sources are clearly acknowledged. And this is the same for your website. You might want images to be displayed in your website related to the topic. They also need to be clearly acknowledged. So while you are doing your research, you might come across some really cool images on the topic. If you find one that's really useful, make sure that you save that image to your sources folder. But when we get to our phase three, we're going to have to acknowledge it. So in the sources document that I created that I mentioned earlier, I've also got a section there for images where you can keep track of the images that you've downloaded, the publication date, the date access, where you got it from. So you can fill this all in so that when we get to the phase three, you've got that information so that you can clearly acknowledge it and you don't have to find that image again. Reminder, you can download that document from tinyurl.com slash sources, and that can keep track of all your websites, your resources, and your images. Just another general tip, don't always stick to Google Images. There's also other websites which are really great for finding images. There's a website called Unsplash, which is great for finding images that are free to use. So go check out that website as well. So let's recap our CatPat tips. Number one, use good keywords. 
Make sure that you're not just using the topic, but you're also talking about the sector that you are using, the different categories that you're using words like predictions to help you find the information that you want. Use good sites. Don't just stick to Google, but check out Google News, check out Google Scholar, check out those reputable sites like TED. And don't forget about that cool AI site that can help you find information. And once you've found all that information, record your sources, where you got them, what their details are, so that you can acknowledge them in your phase three. Use my sources document to help record all of that and also save your sources as PDFs so that you've got evidence of them. You can also use them offline. And then while you are doing all this research, if you find great images, don't forget to record their details as well. There are your five tips for the research. If you follow them, you are going to not only find good resources, but you are going to collect the information that's going to set you up, particularly for your phase three. So go out there, do your research and good luck. For more tips for your cat pet as well as other cat resources, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel at Miss Long IT and Cat. Become a subscriber, follow us on YouTube at Miss Long Education and our theory channel at Miss Long Computer Terms. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.